Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom Ray, and on today's show, I'm going to be talking with a musician that lives here in Madison. Now, this show is called Tom Ray's Art Podcast, but really, art is anything that you create. I think, uh, I mean, me, I make web comics and I also do animation, but I'm also a musician. It's actually one of my main things that I do is, is making music with my band Lorenzo's Music. So I love it when I get the chance to talk to musicians as well. And I've done that a couple of times on the show, uh, along with writers and painters and sculptures and sculptors, not sculptures, sculptors, uh, all kinds of stuff. So I was really excited that I got to meet the person that I did today. Uh, she not only performs music, but is involved with city planning and the city planning that she's involved with is trying to bring, bring more diversity to music here in town. So we talk a bit about kind of the exclusivity that can sometimes happen with festivals and venues and how she would like to change all that. So uh, that's, that's one of the things we talk about along with the music that she makes, some of the projects that she does and a video that she records in the middle of a crowded venue here in town just decides to shoot a video and I thought that was fantastic. So we talk about that. Don't forget to visit TomRay'sWebsite.com where you can see all of the shows, uh, my daily webcomic, some of the uh, behind the scenes stuff of what I do with my own business here in town. I have a daily or a weekly vlog that I do about how I'm supporting myself selling things that I love and collectibles that I like through the 50s and the 90s. And then also the website for the person I talked to today is AngelaPuertaMusic.com. So you can go there and visit the person that I speak to today. Here is today's episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. My name is Angela Puerta. I'm a singer and songwriter, and I'm also a city planner for the city of Madison. That's the part that fascinates me, is the city planner thing. Now, I know I have you here to talk about art <laughs> and things no, no, like no. that. I'm actually planning on speaking about those two things, because I've been lately combining the two, um, because there is a project that I've been working on. We can talk about it. It's the... Yeah task force on equity in music and entertainment. Um, so planning division, within planning division, uh, we have the arts section and I've joined uh, the only art person who's working on that, which is Karen Wolf. She's the arts coordinator and I've been helping her leading the music part of her work. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of um, uh, my new uh, task. At work, even though it's not city planning per se, it's it relates to um, how we engage the community, how we bring equity to our neighborhoods. So I'm kind of trying to uh, combine the two things, is this, and I would love to talk about it. Yeah, is this something that you just uh, recently started doing, or uh, how did you get started doing this, and when? Yeah, well, my, my supervisor uh, knew that I was a musician and I've been always been passionate about all the festivals that happen in Madison and how we can involve the community uh, through arts. So I pretty much asked him if I could help the arts coordinator to uh, bring more equity and more uh, involvement from different um, communities like uh, Latino communities, uh, African Americans, foreigners in general, to the Make Music Madison program. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Um, last year, I started to to help the managing director of this program to bring it to other neighborhoods in Madison to engage other musicians, um, to advertise the event in different media outlets that weren't uh, that popular or are not that popular um, within whites, the white population. So um, it was an interesting experience. I think that uh, we made it more inclusive. However, we, there is a long way to go. But uh, the cool thing about this is that then the virus happened 
and Karen was so overwhelmed with these uh, mural paintings that yeah. were happening on Bay Street. So she was working very hard on that, and and she said, you know, I would love if you could help me with the music um, part, if you could lead, if uh, maybe bring more equity, or you know, you know, the music sector. Why don't you get involved? And I was like, oh my God, please tell my boss, <laughs> please tell my boss this. And 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 my boss was like, you know. Um, sure, don't spend too much time on that because it's not your main role, but, yeah. um, but definitely work on that. So I joined this team. It's called the Greater uh, Madison Music City team uh, that came out of the Equity in Music Task Force on Equity in Music yeah. uh, report that was accepted last year by the Common Council, and there were 31 recommendations that came out out of that and our main goal is to uh, implement those recommendations to make it happen so we uh, can find more equity and, and inclusiveness in the music sector here in Madison. So I joined the team I would say probably April, May okay. and, and I've been working with them and it's 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 been interesting because um, we we actually get some money from the room tax um, commission around two weeks ago, so that was our first uh, achievement. And so we can work, with, we can start the work at uh, the beginning of next year. And the first step would be to um, hire Sound Diplomacy, which is a consultant, um, music a strategic consultancy based in London. They've done amazing work in different. In London. Uh, yeah, they are based in London. Oh. Shane, yeah, Shane Shapiro is actually is actually American, but he he's based in London and he has done work with uh, multiple cities from different sizes around the world. You can Google it. It's called Sound Diplomacy. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they have actually done some work in Colombia, where I come from. So that was kind of lovely. Lovely, and the 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 main idea is that. Um, they do an analysis. So first, there is a uh, data gathering, anecdotal, and also um, um, you know data from this uh, city records or uh, and how the economic impact um, works, how music is really uh, being impactful in certain cities. So the idea is that in January they can start working on the economic impact part, uh, doing some research. Um, and then working on potential recommendations to um, to make our music industry in Madison more um, more reliable, sustainable. That musicians can make a living out of music. That we are equitable. Um, that that we cannot we we can succeed doing music, and we don't have yeah. to go somewhere else because that's that's one of the problems that. There is a point as a musician that you reach in Madison, and then it's like, okay, then what? What am I gonna do? I'm not making a good living uh, by being a musician here. I have to, I have to leave, mm -hmm. and we don't want that. So we we want to retain um, th that that talent that many musicians have, but unfortunately, the reality is that many have to have to leave. Now, as a person myself who's been playing music in town here uh, since the mid nineties, I hate to admit, but <laughs> the, uh, uh, I know that uh, there have been different types of committees that have tried to do this in the past. And I guess I'd like to know what you, what your plan is, because I know in the past there was a committee that was attempting to try and bring healthcare for musicians, musicians that were being able to, or that were playing out and doing it as a form of income. Uh, when you do, you can only really make a certain amount in town, or yeah. at least that's the way it was. Um, and, and also this may be something you're trying to adjust or uh, address as well, which is more money mm -hmm. for musicians. Like right now playing in town here, it's not lucrative. Like, like yeah. even, even if you do get shows, you're I usually know. offered about like, maybe you'll get $75 for a group of five, seven people on stage. Uh, even if it's a good night or maybe if it's a good night, you'll get a hundred dollars. That That's the thing as well. And solo musicians, they at least, or, uh, 
you know, uh, solo acts or whatever, they at least get the benefit of not having to split that pay. But there are now, and I say this not out of doubting you. I say, please, what is the plan? Because I'd love, I've seen it happen before and it never seems to really, uh, it kind of happens. There's a committee to do it. And then I never really have seen it through. So I guess I am really curious about like what type of stuff you are trying or the ideas or other things that you have planned for musicians, because as one myself, I would like to know. And of course you're one yourself. So I, that's, I do like that. I like that there's a musician involved. Yeah. And, and, and I've experienced that a lot because I started singing with a band, uh, then realizing that, you know, like $500 being split by eight, 10 people, mm -hmm. you end up like with very little money. Which by so, the way, where are you playing for $500? Because even I don't know where that is. <laughs> oh, festivals? Oh, festivals. Yes. Good. Valid uh, point. Like, okay. Scenario. <laughs> You're right. Go, if you play, let's say, uh, Orton Park, mm -hmm. Orton West, or Fed de Maquette, Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what they say, but um, um, like I I wouldn't be able to right now to give you the answer like hey this is exactly what we're gonna do. Oh, you because, just got started, and I don't expect you to have one. I'm curious what your plans are. Yeah, because the main idea is to determine what the economic impact in music is right now. First of all, mm -hmm. and by that I mean how much a concert uh, brings to the economy. In reality, when, when I mean the economy, I mean how much in sales for drink and beverages, how much uh, in hotel rooms, how much obviously in tickets and other expenses that um, go that go beyond just the, the concert per se. Um, for example, one of the things that we want to work on is the inclusion part of it. Like you have concerts, who is opening that for that big artist who is opening, who is taking part of that money, right? We want local musicians to open yeah. to be uh, a popular artist. So that might be one of the uh, potential outcomes of it. So we, we, we need partnerships. Uh, we've been talking to Frank Productions, the Overture Center, um, Destination Mice, and different organizations that uh, see music as a big piece of their economy, especially the uh, the tourism part. So um, making them work with us as well, like why don't we have local musicians um, in, in standardize the um, the payment for them? Because that's that's one of the biggest problems that uh, in so many cases there is not. An awareness about the value of music. Mm -hmm. uh, I receive emails. Hey, do you wanna play? I don't know at this specific place, and you get an amazing exposure. People offer you exposure at a bar. Yeah. So it's like real exposure, but they 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 pretend that oh, they will yes. pay you exposure. Like I, I meant in a way, so it's not really. Uh, real exposure so what 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 are people expecting from a musician uh given that you spent so much money on equipment we were talking about all the equipment that i have yes. here uh, it's a lot of money it's like most of my money goes to hey let's buy a guitar let's buy you know in the yeah. lessons i have to pay for lessons i have to spend time um, practicing, as I said, uh, I decided to go as a solo artist, so I I, I, I have to learn music. Mm -hmm. Like for the theory of music, I have to learn how to play the guitar so I can have good sounds while I sing. So th those those things um, are not really uh, a value for people, or, or, or they just forget about it. Yeah. They just see the problem. Right, they just see those three minutes, four minutes that you are sharing your art, mm -hmm. but it's like you know, it's just five minutes. How much will you charge for for a song that is just five minutes? Yeah. Just do it for free because it's just five minutes, five minutes of your time. But if you go to a lawyer, the lawyer is not gonna charge you <laughs> for, for five minutes. <laughs> so we want to we want to build awareness. Uh, we want to uh, raise the voice of uh, local musicians, especially musicians who 
uh, don't have the access to stages, and by that I mean um, diversify our genres, not only rock, not only blues, not only mm -hmm. country music, but uh, hip hop artists uh, without the stigma of uh, what goes with hip hop. That's yeah. unfortunate. And so we we it's 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 a big work because it's not only a social type of work it's an economic work that um it's it's a plan that we have to uh design with this uh consultant firm because the main idea of hiring sound diplomacy is because we don't we don't know we, we don't have the expertise that mm -hmm. they have we have worked in um many cities around um the US and around the world, and they, they know how to gather the data, how to interpret the data. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to work with them and, and, and see and see what comes out, out of this. Um, so that's why I said I don't have like the specifics. Oh, yeah. I can tell you that we want to partner with different organizations uh, in Madison. So uh, we make sure that we work collaboratively because that, that's something that we're missing right now. Um, how we can raise the voices of uh, the underserved populations, um, the stigmatized uh, genres uh, like hip hop, um, how we bring local artists to the big venues uh, in, in very well paid stages so they get the exposure and they get paid very well because I know what you might think is oh but you know musicians if you're not in the top 10 mm -hmm. uh, state you know you don't make really good music really good money so how can you do that and it's um, we have a long way to go but it's a matter of also raise awareness of the importance of music in our health and in our tourism yeah and, and I will say the one of the things that seems to be a cycle of what happens as well is you were talking about the top 10 musicians and there really is each sort of five years, there's the band or the group of bands that it's like, well, there's a festival. These are going to be the bands that are playing. Like you could just name them off off the top of your head. Like those are the bands that are going to be there. So why even bother? You know, that, that sort of inclusion is definitely something I would love to see where it's who's this band? I've never heard of them. But the problem is, is that doesn't bring in the money, or at least you think that it won't. I mean, truthfully, I think a lot of the festivals that we have, uh, people are going to show up anyway. <laughs> like they're going there for the festival. The music is an added bonus. It's, it, but I do know that a lot of, uh, let's say uh, I was, I had an opportunity to perform at, uh, uh, what's the, uh, the Central Park one, all of a sudden I'm escaping, uh, Fête de Marquette. Yeah, Fête de Marquette. Or like sessions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had an opportunity or at least got the uh, the uh, conversation to play at it. And the person running it said, well, can people dance to your stuff? And I oh, said, I no. <laughs> and then they said, well, then you're probably not going to play. Well, is that the kind of inclusion that, you know, I, I mean... <laughs> I want to make sure that that's also because that that pigeonholes what can happen at these events and, and what you're talking about. And I guess it's true. If people are going there to dance, of course, you don't want like some alternative punk band showing up. I mean, that is logic right there. Of course, it, at, at an event for dancing, you would want a dance mm -hmm. band. But that mm -hmm. is a diverse concert that goes on all day long. And it's not necessarily like dancing all day long. It's people, you know, eating, hanging out, having fun going to the beer tent, that sort of stuff. But um, so I guess that's my question is, is what kind of inclusion would there be? Because I think that it does get dominated by the top 10. Wow, this is all of a sudden becoming like a city council meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm genuinely curious. It's it's not even me no, complaining. I, yeah, yeah. So uh, obviously I, I personally would respect the main idea of a festival. If a festival is supposed to be, let's say, then dances, Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be for danceable type of music, like they in dances, I would say like, oh, yeah, makes sense, right? Yeah. The diversity is diversity in the programming of uh, festivals that we have here. If we're going to have a danceable um, fest, like they in dances or African fest, why don't we have a hip hop fest? Yeah. Why don't we have 
right? A polka genre type of fest. Yeah. Like maybe for some festivals, it's it's okay to respect the genre. It's okay to to respect that they need certain type of um, music and style. That's totally acceptable. Mm-hmm. But as a whole, looking at the um, bigger uh, scheme of things is how we diversify in the programming in general. For example, uh, we have um, Sylvie, right? It's this big venue, amazing venue. They're not going to bring just rock or pop music. Yeah. We will encourage them to bring a very diverse type of musicians, a very diverse audience, so we see a mix of people participating and enjoying the the concerts. So that's the type of diversity that, that I'm talking about and inclusion. If, if you go to uh, day dances, and this is something that I that I love, it's my favorite fest, is that you see um, different skin colors, mm. different accents, different um, uh, uh, cultures within the dances. Mm-hmm. But if you go to uh, Fed the Market, you see more white people and very, very few um, persons of color. So what's what what's happening there? Maybe we can add within their programming some, some other uh, music styles that might fit within their idea of Fed the Market, right? Which I know it's very European, but maybe we can add some other rhythms that are uh, involved um, a, a genre that might bring people of color. Mm-hmm. So that's 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 a bigger discussion, and that will have to be uh, in collaboration with the organizers. Yeah. Um, so, but you know, those those are the types of conversations that we would have to go through. Uh, the idea is that this group that I was talking about, the Greater Madison Music City, um, can have conversations with the public and public that really represents the city. We are uh, a nation that has at least 13% of our population are people of color, right? You have 6% African-Americans or 7% Hispanics, right? So we have to involve them. They are part of of the city. So um, having those conversations and and, and figure out a plan, figure out uh, a way to to, um, make um, the music sector more inclusive and uh, sustainable for for musicians. Um, and and that, that was actually the, the reason why I found you was because a year ago, I would say, um, I googled <laughs> how can you make a living um, in music in Madison, and I found you because you did. I think that yeah. <laughs> okay, that's why I have I to Google you. that later and find out what that's all about. Yeah. Okay. Because um, there is a sentence that you have or your vision is uh, an artist making a living in Madison. Okay, yeah. Something, something like that. And, and, and that's why I, I followed you and I subscribed to your uh, listserv and all that. Uh, because we're looking for that, that, that kind of um, voice. Like, I, I would love you to be involved in this. This, uh, process um, okay. and because yeah there are, we want to find out we want to find out ways to uh, or ideas to 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 know how to really make a living as an artist as a musician in Madison wow it's complex but maybe we can do it I'd I'd be down for it if if that's a thing I suddenly I feel like I'm on a job interview um no <laughs> 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 no, 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 I'm just saying that like, I found you. That that was uh, I've been I've been following your Instagram for over a year. Oh, I mean you're more into the comics part of it, right? But I I know that you were musicians. I I've uh, I've been doing the musician thing longer than I've been doing the art thing, and I've kind of got the separate accounts, and I'm trying to kind of find a way to meld mm-hmm. them together. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Oh, that's interesting. I'm I'm so surprised that you found it by that. I want to try Googling that after we're done with this interview just to see if I actually show up. <laughs> that's really funny. And that's the thing. I was, first of all, I've been trying to find musicians. I've I've had like one band on this show and it was because they're, uh, they were in Milwaukee and their name was similar to what the show used to be called. 
And um, I just thought that was fascinating. So they were coming in town here to, to play. And I was like, I want to meet them because I think music is as much of an art as uh, creating painting or drawing or anything like that. I mean, it is. Uh, it, truthfully, when you say artist, a lot of people think you mean musician. When you go, oh, I follow this artist, people will go, a, a lot of people will be, think you're talking about a music artist, you know? So I, and that's why I was so happy when you signed up because I was like, oh good, a musician. <laughs> so I was so excited to talk to a musician it's, and, and even in town, no less. So, um, and that's, watch this transition. And that's why I'd like to ask with everything we talked about, why did you decide to become a musician with everything that's so difficult? And, and I mean, same with me. I, have, I don't have an answer for this, but why are we musicians? Because it is literally one of the most easily shared art forms next to sharing a picture online. You know, <laughs> why, yeah. why do we do it? Why do you do it? I, I think I couldn't live without music. It's, yeah? it's part, of, part of myself. And my mom is a singer. Uh, and she told me, don't pursue music as a career. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, just I get put it. it into this context. You are from Colombia. <laughs> um, and very, very few people make a living as a musician in Colombia. Well, in here as well. But in Colombia, it's it's even harder than, than here. Yeah. So um, I... I wanted to do something related to the arts, so I started architecture, and I joined the band. It was just, it's like an inertia. It's like you feel drawn to that. Like you have to, you have to find that space to play music, to share your feelings, your thoughts through a rhythm. Um, not even a language. You don't, you don't even have to like um, have amazing lyrics to express emotions. Right, so uh, a way to connect with other people, and even as a, as, a, as an architect, I had I, I always had my my music band. Um, I played like Thursday to Saturday every week, almost every week in wow. Bogota, Colombia. So um, I focus mainly on um, my vocals, um, but then when I moved to Australia, because I lived in Australia for almost two years. I wow. know this is like, <laughs> uh, because I, I needed to learn the language. So I went there to, to learn how to speak English and really, and, yeah, I know, <laughs> huh. but it's good because you can uh, build up your listening skills mm -hmm. in Australia because their accent is pretty, pretty interesting. Is, so, yeah. anyway, so I, um, then I moved to Madison. Uh, to do my master's degree in urban and regional planning uh, because then I realized that yes, architecture is fun, but uh, you work for the rich most of the time and I'm more like community oriented type of person. Um, I like I want to somehow, you know, help make an impact in society and I have all these big dreams. So I thought that through uh, urban planning, I was able to, to, to do that. And, um, and when I moved here in fall 2013, so I've been here seven years, hmm. um, I joined a Latin band, and as I said, then decided to to do a solo um, project. Sometimes, you know, I have like musicians with me, but um, it's easier. It's just easier to to play by yourself. Um, yeah. Even though it's challenging, challenging in the music aspect, like the theory and all the skills that you have to develop in order to uh, have a good performance um, just by yourself. But, um, you know, working on that every day. And I just, I mean, to your question, in summary, it's just that it's part of myself. Like I, if I had a choice um, or if, I had had a choice when I was in Colombia. I would probably be a musician, just musician, right? Yeah. Because it's just fun. Like, it yeah. Is. In the uh, just last night, I, I was actually out at my my studio working on stuff, and by the time I was done, I just had this thought in my head, and this happens all the time, and I'm sure everybody thinks this, but it's 
and I guess it kind of goes to what you're doing with the city planning and also involving music and talking about the music community. I was done and I enjoyed it so much and I created something and I'm like, okay, I created this thing. Now, what do I do with it? How do I make this something that this is what I do? What, like it's, it's there. I like it. I can share it. And that's about the extent of it. Like, what more am I going to do with this? How do you, and I guess that's the part of what I'm doing when you said you found this podcast, I'm trying to expand on what is it that can be done with this. And I think the main thing I've learned is it's not a singular thing. It's not release this song and then hopefully everybody's going to find it and it'll go woo. It's the, I'm also using it for like, I created the song. I have an instrumental track that I put online that can be used as background for video for free, but they have to attribute me to it. Or that's actually how I get a lot of the Whoa. people that follow me is it's because my music gets used in the back of gamer videos. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, oh. yeah. And then one got, that's very popular used me uh, or used uh, the band's music in the background of it. And all of a sudden, boom, like tons of people started downloading it and following it and using it in their videos. Like that's another way of doing it. Uh, just, you know, it's beyond just playing out live and selling merch. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. And that's also why I did that podcast uh, with the band to meet other local musicians, one, to network, and two, just because it's not all about me. The band doesn't always have to be like, hey, we have a new release. Hey, we're working on something. Hey, it, it's, it's community. And that's why I'm saying I'm trying to meld it because I hate the fact that I was able to start doing that. Like that was the basis of this. Like I had no agenda whatsoever. I just wanted to meet people and talk to artists. Yeah. And I started trying to do that with the, the band website, but I'd love to bring more musicians over and talk uh -huh. to them on this. And that's why I'm happy that I spoke to you. And yeah. that's the beauty of all this. And so Th those are the things that I'm trying to learn from it and why, why I do it. I agree with you. Like I was working on it last night and all of a sudden all the problems I was having, I forgot about it because I was trying to figure out the best sound for this one part. And I'm messing with like MIDI tracks going, do I want a trombone sound or should I add di distortion on it? Next thing I know, two hours had gone by and I was just sitting here deciding between two different sounds. <laughs> yeah. And th that's yeah. what I love about it. Getting lost <laughs> like that. And you have to wear different hats, right? You cannot just be a guitarist mm -hmm. or a piano player. You have to, you have to be a marketing person. Yeah. <laughs> you have to connect to to people, and and that's something that we're missing in in Madison, right? I feel maybe I'm wrong um, that we need to collaborate more. Mm -hmm. among musicians having this. Um, Camaraderia, in Spanish we say camaraderia, but maybe I'm, I'm yeah, mixing words. But this like friendly space where we can like share um, how to improve our quality of sound, how to raise our voices, how how we can you know collaborate in music. Just playing, let's say you have a show and I show up at your show and I sing a song, mm -hmm. for example. And we have these like. Uh, collaboration among musicians. So uh, I think that your podcast and all the things that you're doing with your website might might be helpful for that. Hmm. And and maybe we have more people join your effort, or maybe more people doing uh, podcasts. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, being more uh, more in the community, like we have a friend, we need to have a more friendly music community that support each other help each other because sometimes you know you can feel among musicians this uh friction like oh you got that gig or you got that festival and i didn't get it <laughs> right definitely and that's something i am trying to get over and that's that's also the reason i want to do this because i want to be happy for other people i want to lift up other people rather than go oh i hate that they're getting all this these accolades i'm i want to go like hey that's great let's talk about it you know and i agree with you yeah because we know that it's a competitive um, career and especially in Madison, you don't have uh, many opportunities to to play and get paid decently. Um, so I, I love I love that effort. I mean, if I had the time, I, I would probably do it. But I think that through planning, now that I have that opportunity to to work uh, in the music sector, yeah. in the more administrative part of it, in the more like um, inclusion and equity part of it. I think that, that that that's that's amazing, and and I want to be able to 
to combine the two in a way that improve our music sector mm -hmm. in my eyes. Uh, because, um, you know, like I've experienced um, playing in Madison and I had a video and, and I've won, you know, these MAMA awards. <laughs> yes. Hold on. Hold on. I want to I want to back up about that video because I love if it's the video you're talking about. And even if it's not, I want to talk about this video. The one where you are singing in the middle of the Capitol. Uh -huh. You have such confidence oh my how are you you're like people are saying like nobody knew you were doing this it wasn't like you said okay we're gonna rent out the cat you clearly just walked in there and started singing yeah. and videotaping in the middle of the capitol first of all i was just like that is a gutsy person like that's even even performing on stage i'd be like i'd walk in there and go we're not doing this uh, that's amazing <laughs> that you did that so tell me tell me about that video first of all well, you know, it was improvised. That that, part, that section, um, when I go out around the capital, it's the farmer's market, as you can tell. There were a lot of people. Yeah. It was just coincidence because my idea was just to uh, record the video inside the capital. But then the weather got nice, and I was like, oh, you know what? Let's 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 do it outside. Yeah. And I kept walking, and I was just focused. Like I feel that when I have when I have a project, I focus on that project and like there is nothing else. Mm -hmm. Like when you saw me like looking at the camera, like to me there wasn't many people. Like there was like empty, mm -hmm. right? Like of course, yeah, I, I like I, I in my periphery, yes. <laughs> I saw people, right? But I was just focused on the camera and focused on the lyrics. So I, you know, um, and the rhythm and my dancing and that was it but it was improvised and and i feel that uh it's just, it's the power of music like if you focus on what you're doing uh there is nothing else that can stop you or distract you you're just focused and i knew that i only had that day uh, and that i knew that i was paying for that video and i had like very little chance to screw up yeah <laughs> so let her do it well. So in 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 the, in the video, uh, the camera guy was a very good friend. He's a very good friend. So you know that also helps. Like he was just like while I was recording, he was like helping me. Like you know, nice, that's good. You know, you have that that sort of support. That that helps. Yeah. That helps. All I know is I feel silly taking a video call while walking down the street and you're like singing along to one of your songs and performing. And that was, you have to, you have to just, you have to forget that there, that there is someone else. Like you have to yeah. forget about it. You just have to focus. I know it's easy to say rather than doing it, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, when you perform on stage, you are, you have to you have to show confidence because even if you play very well you sing very well if uh the audience don't perceive that confidence in you they don't pay attention to you they're like oh they just walk away and, yeah. unless they are music uh fanatics but if like regular people just pay attention to uh how you how confident you are like yeah. is is she good i don't know if she if she's good. <laughs> i don't have like you know like maybe the music ear but oh she looks like she knows what she's doing so she might be good yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and it happens that happens oh wow and so with the everything shutting down and not being able to play out right now like how are you adjusting to this what are some of the things that you're doing to kind of i don't know uh, make music in this this new world i don't know even what to refer to it as i i i haven't done much music i i started to do facebook live mm -hmm. video but mm, it's not the same you need that um those claps you need uh people that you can speak to you need the reaction you need to see i i, I love to see people's eyes like are they having fun uh, oh, yeah yeah you know, like I, I, I like the interaction, so um, I just stopped doing it, and I'm actually focused on 
on my planning career. I know, like, right. uh, I need a, a certification that I need to. It's a test that I have to take in November. Oh. So I'm planning for that like crazy. Hopefully, I pass. Yeah, but, I hope you do too. <laughs> but you know, I there is. I have a lot of time. I used to be a busy person because I had the music part, so you know, like rehearsals and all that. But now that there is not that, I'm just studying most of the time. Um, I'm also taking some guitar lessons uh, from a musician, a Colombian friend who is a musician. So we're doing those Zoom <laughs> guitar lessons. Um, but other than that, I think it's on a standby. Like my music. Uh, as a solo artist, is is on a standby. There okay. is not. I might I might do some uh, concerts, li- live concerts. The, there are some like Cargo Coffee. I know that they have done some uh, concerts. Um, they record the concerts. There is no one there, but uh, yeah, you have record. something coming up on October 9th or the eleventh or something like that, don't you? Oh yeah, but that's um, that's more like a conversation with Araceli. Ah, okay. It's, it's to celebrate the um, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month because okay. it goes October fifteenth, no oh, September fifteenth to October fifteenth. Uh, I might sing maybe a couple of songs, but it's more like a conversation, a celebration of uh, the uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. But I'm just going to wait until I take the test mm-hmm. and then I'll go back <laughs> to my music um, career, my music performance. That makes sense. Uh, I mean, how much stuff do you have to study for? Is it like a long test or? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, urban planning, urban planning is a very broad, uh, multidisciplinary career. So you have transportation, you have to know about transportation, environmental acts, you have to know about housing and all the um, uh, regulations that go beyond that. And um, you have to know about all parks and open space, neighborhoods, uh, the different types of planning efforts that you have in this country. It's a nation, nation nationwide test. Mm-hmm. So uh, oh, really? I have to, yeah, so I have to see it more, uh, not focus on what I do in Madison, but it has to be like very general. You have to know, really know the ba- the ba- the basics of mm-hmm. planning. And there is a lot of history behind that. Like you have to know like the federal acts and it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, a lot of information <laughs> to memorize. I, w- I want to cut out of it, even just listening to you talk about it. <laughs> it's, it's like being back in school. It's like, I wonder no. if I can get out of here or say I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> when you say like, oh, I'm talking like a console member. like this is, uh, <laughs> I'm just meeting. saying it's not for me. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. But that's the beautiful part is I love that you're doing it because I feel like you will represent the things that you're talking about. That's why it's not for me. I'd be like. This is a lot of work. I don't know if I can, I'd like to help you guys, but I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I've, I guess I've never tried to do something like that. And I'm, I just love that someone who is enthusiastic about it and also is kind of trying to include um, different types of artists and uh, sort of entertainment and things like that into what's coming up uh, and also just adjusting with what's happening in the world. So it's, mm-hmm. It's that's really cool, and I, I hope you do well at it. And I, you know what, you will do well at it. That's that's what I'm saying. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jinx it like that. You're gonna do great. <laughs> well, we'll see. you know, there are some uh, language. Um, I wouldn't say barriers, but challenges. Okay. Because you know, the, the, there is some language that is very low, like um, regulation type of language. Oh yeah. That it's like, oh, old English, and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. And and that's what I like about urban planning. It's so broad. It's so big that you can do music and still be an urban planning planner. Yeah. This music, it's part of of a city. Everything is a part of a city. And and it's so cool that I'm able to to start shifting gears and moving more towards. Uh, the arts uh, part of it, the music part of it. So 
um, we, we'll see how it goes. I still want to do neighborhood planning, which is my focus. Um, but it's been a little bit challenging because we do many uh, public engagement meetings. We go out oh. in the community a lot. But because of the pandemic, it's been kind of difficult. We cannot go out and, and meet with, with people. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I hope that the pandemic uh, goes over very soon. I'm because sure everybody does. I don't think you're alone in that one. <laughs> especially the music sector. What have you done? Like, uh, let's change roles here. I'm <laughs> okay. All right. What have you done? No, I'm kidding. But I am I'm, I'm interested to know um, what have you done with your music career during the pandemic? Um, what I did is, oddly enough, there was one thing that I was working on that turned out to be beneficial of when this all happened, which was setting up a way to record, like multi-track record remotely using a repository, a an online repository where we could share, create branches of the song to work on new parts of it. So uh, my band, uh, our my band is based solely in or not solely, but we're, we're heavy involved in Creative Commons and open source software. So we believe in like the access of open culture and software and being able to mm -hmm. share and all that stuff for creative purposes. And one of the multi-track tools that we use is a, a uh, recording is recording software called Ardour. And I'm also a software developer, or I used to be until I started working on my own thing. And okay. uh, one of the things we would do is you would share all the software that you had. You would share it to a repository at GitHub and people working on it would be able to, multiple people could work on the same thing. But you share it for free or do you get paid? No, we, well, we share it for free, except for the fact that it involves uh, large files, which are wave files. So I pay $5 a month for large files, uh, being able mm -hmm. to store large files. So it's, it's essentially just $5 a month, but the software is free. The, uh, I mean, essentially everything else we use is for free. I just pay for the storage, mm -hmm. which is very cheap. And mm -hmm. we're able, and I had been doing this just also because before we started uh, talking, I had talked about how I record everything we're doing remotely because in case anything happens to my computer, yeah. I don't lose it. Well, that's the same yeah. way with why I set this up is because I was originally just using it to store our recording sessions using this uh, on GitHub and I was using it to store it. So just in case anything ever happened, I'd be able to go, Hey, I already have a backup of it and it has all this stuff and it's ready to go. And I could just download it. But I knew that in the future it would be like, and then you guys could work on your parts from home instead of us having to be in the same room together. Well, then this mm -hmm. all happened. And I was like, Hey, guess what? We can try out this system that I've been saying, you know, we should learn this. And we did. And we've actually started working on an album and we're going to be releasing singles before we put out the album. We've got like maybe six songs so far. We've actually, I think we've written faster being able to work remotely than we have being able to work together. You know, it's, it's been interesting. With your uh, music mates, your music, your musician friends or yeah. how do you record that? Okay. Yeah. We all, they're able to download the action. So the software itself is, the way that it's set up is it's all based on a folder, a file system with folders and it's controlled by one, uh, one, uh, what would it be like, uh, one file. It's, it's essentially a document that controls how the software opens and what it does and where everything is. And when I saw that, I knew I was like, this is the only thing that changes. And then everything else is, it's just like kind of telling everything where to go. And that's when I realized it could be used as a versioning system. So then they can download it, open up that file, which opens up the software and all of the folders and everything and all the changes and the recording tracks are right there. Mm -hmm. And we're all mm -hmm. able to use it. And then they can push their stuff up to that. And then I can download their changes and it's all right there. It's, it's as if we're able to, it's, it's almost like we're sharing the software. And I know there is the ability to do that in professional software, but also you have to pay hundreds of dollars for that. And we would all need to pay hundreds of dollars for that software. This is mm -hmm. one where we can uh, do it through open source and we've been working on it. And that's one of the things we've done. It's been kind of interesting. And um, oddly enough, we're pretty happy with the results. Like I thought it was going to be kind of a compromise, but instead it's like, uh -huh. this is interesting. This is, this is pretty much, it sounds like we were in the room together doing this. It's, 
I've been pretty happy with it. Do you think that you can make a living? That's one of the things I'm working on. That's why we're going to be releasing it as a single. And I'm going to, um, uh, I've been looking at how we've been doing. Uh, another thing is looking at other countries, such as right now, a lot of our stuff is very popular in Croatia for some reason. <laughs> I know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like we're, we're really big in Croatia and they I've noticed have, um, uh, a lot of the links that come from there are from BitTorrent sites. So people have been sharing our music through BitTorrent because it's a way for them to, that's, that's just how, uh, the people who listen to it have been transferring the files there. So I've been working, uh, learning from that. I've been going, okay, I'm going to release some stuff on BitTorrent, especially with these new songs and see if that builds up popularity. Plus, like I said before, it's being used in gamer videos. It's also being used in unboxing videos, things like mm -hmm. that. So uh, it, it's just kind of looking at where that stuff is coming from. And that's what I'm trying to learn from it. And right now it's the, it's the reach the audience and then learn from there what I can, what, what can be benefited from it. So uh -huh. it's the get the popularity and then the idea will come to you. Like, it's not a bad idea to go like, hey, we're really popular here. Instead of going, I'm just going to start charging money over there because that's where it's popular. It's like, I, I don't want to suddenly go all the people that were interested in it just because they like the music to start gating it sure. off because I, there's possibly a chance to make money. I want to go, what more would you like to do? How can I get involved? Because I know we also get a lot of hits from, Europe, or, uh, from Russia too, and I don't know quite what to think about that. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to cut off Russia, you know. I don't want to cut off Russia either because, uh, you know, it's we're we're getting a lot of traffic there. But also, it could just be spam bots. I don't know. But uh, yeah. But as far as Croatia, I know that actively people are commenting like on our YouTube videos and things like that. So yeah, I, th those are some of the things. It's it's really just kind of interact and learn, and then see if there are opportunities or even like people that I can connect with. So yeah. that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, so Sweet. as far as making money, I mean, uh, we made $100 last month. That's about as much as we would have made if we would have played shows. <laughs> so. Wow, that's, yeah, that's kind of true. You do the comics aspect of it, and right? I've seen some of the comics, and that's also to share it mm -hmm. for free just to get to build up connections yeah i guess yeah and then i put the comics on instagram on my website and then i release uh yearly i put together a book and uh just kind of whatever the theme is that year i just kind of put that as the book and then there's also i release it on twitter and uh different photo sharing and web comic sharing apps like uh, i actually ended up uh, interviewing someone who follows my comic on the show just like a couple days ago and they're okay. a web comic artist on one of the other platforms that I go to or that I use and I was just happy to meet them I was like another web comic artist woo you know and and it was all just because they saw my comic online so th that's what I'm saying is there are opportunities and now who knows what's going to happen in the web comic community because I spoke with that person it's yeah. so I create and then just put it out there and see where it resonates I suppose and then uh, yeah. just try to build up from there. It's really the plan. Are those done by hand entirely, or, or well, do you have a program? A, a little bit of both. I, I draw them by hand on my tablet using a program called Medibang Paint. So they are done by hand, but they're done by hand digitally with a, okay. with a pencil directly. on. So it's like mm -hmm. I'm drawing on paper, but it's, it's a tablet as paper. But yeah, I, I mean, I do hand draw them. Well, you're very good at it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Wow, that was a lot about me. So <laughs> let's move back to you. <laughs> the topic, but well, I just wanted to know more about you. Yeah, yeah. no, that's the, I, and I'm happy. I, I, I'm happy to. I just always feel weird do, when I do the show and then talk about myself. And I'm like, nobody wants to hear about me. Um, <laughs> and the, uh, one of the things I would like to ask you, first of all, do you have any other like obsessions or things that like when you aren't studying or doing music, like something that you're just like, this is what you're going to sit down and do. Like, do you have any, any just hobby that you do? Maybe not. <laughs> no, I like, running. I like, I like to exercise. So, um, that's my other hobby It's just to go for runs and, do some exercise at home as well. 
Really? Do you, uh, when you go for running, like what kind, like how far do you run? Did you used to do cross country or? Uh, you know, like let's say three times a week and every time it's four miles. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm not like a long distance runner. Yeah. But it's just to get some exercise and, and uh, there is something about running that gives you like some sort of like um like a high emo- it's it's weird it's a it's a very weird way to express it because it's like like you feel that you're high but in a good way oh like yeah in a, healthy, in a healthy way um so it, it it makes my day like i feel after after running i feel way better for the rest of my day it's okay. like oh my body th- thanks me for that with winter yeah. coming up, I was actually trying to figure this out the other day. What are you going to do during the winter? Because it's not really that easy to run outside in the winter. Or do you still just risk it? Yeah, you can run. I mean, as long as the um, – if, if you go through the bike paths, they usually are plowed yeah. first. Um, and then they plow the, um, the streets. And, and, you know, it's not – I mean, you have to be careful with ice. But other than that, in depending on the temperature, like if it's below 15 Fahrenheit, I wouldn't go for a run yeah. because it's too cold. But if it's uh, higher than 15 Fahrenheit, I'll, I'll, I'll run. As, you know, you just need a long leaf, sleeve, uh, shirt, uh, long pants, and go for a run. I just, you know, like after 10 minutes, you're totally worn up. Okay. The bike path thing is more, mainly I was just like, I'm always afraid I'm just going to fall down and break something. So uh, the bike path is a, is an interesting thought though. That's, that's a good point. Because they are usually plowed or at least they put salt in it. Like even if there is some right. ice, uh, there is enough friction for you to like keep running and not falling over. But uh, I think bike paths are usually... Uh, safe way to go and obviously just watch out that there is it's not snowing it's not good to go for a run while it's snowing right so that would be dangerous yes <laughs> you know trust your instincts yeah and then uh one last thing is there anything you'd like to mention that uh maybe we didn't cover or something that you have coming up that you'd like to let people know about um that's a great question i don't know like i, I i've been like i've stopped doing music that I just want to be over with the pandemic and be able to perform outside because I miss it so much. Like there is not, let me think about, um, no. Okay. No, not really. (laughs) (laughs) Just everyone stop being sick and uh, hopefully everything. I said like um, I, I, when I focus, I try to really focus. And right now it's, just about that test. <laughs> Makes like sense. It's about that test that once I'm done with that, it's happening on November 24th. So once I'm done with that, I can focus on my music part. All right. And then I'll be able to have some news. So if people did want to hear more about uh, or hear more of your music, where could they go to find you? Uh, my website, uh, which is anilapuertamusic.com uh, or my Facebook page. Angela Puerta Music or Instagram, which has the same name, uh, Angela Puerta Music. Something that I didn't mention, but it's not going to hurt to to say it. I also work um, with kids, so I have a kids project. So it's oh, really? uh, Angela Puerta y Amigos. So I do um, performance for kids between four and ten years old. So I usually mix Spanish songs with um, English speaking songs. Uh, so we teach them. And when I say we, uh, it's because I usually perform with other musicians. Um, oh. We teach them how to dance, uh, Latin music, like salsa, merengue, cumbia. Um, and we also teach them how to pronounce some words in Spanish. So it's very interactive project. I haven't done anything with, with it either because of the pandemic. But uh, that's also a cool project. I have a website. It's apamigos.com. And uh, there are some some uh, songs in the, the in the website that people can listen to as well. Cool. If you have kids. Nice. Well, I want to thank you so much for, uh, first of all, for signing up and uh, 
actually agreeing to be on the show. I'm so glad I got to meet you. Yeah, no, me too.